Tony, he's Mike, and today we are bringing you a double dose. She just wants a double dose of, me, 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 me. of the scholarly analysis of the films of Tom Fridley. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we are doing 1994's Hard Vice. Hard Vice, starring Sam Jones and Shannon Tweed, the action packed theatrical release from Apex Entertainment. Hard Vice. Never heard of it? Neither had we! <laughs> Starring Sam Jones from uh, Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon, quarterback, New York Jets. Absolutely. Uh, and Shannon Tweed from a bunch of other softcore fucking bullshit movies you've never seen either, unless you're a fan of the softcore. I'm yeah, just or, or our age and you're, you know. Had cable. Yeah, yeah, cable skin, <laughs> Skinamax, as it was called back in the day. Uh, th this this movie is straight <laughs> dog shit. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait! You're forgetting one. You see, because the big police chief, did you recognize him? No. The killer is probably a prostitute. Well, if I told you that he was the coach in Major League. Let me think it over, will you, Charlie? I got a guy on the other line about some white walls. I'll talk to you later. I, so, any, any, anyways, <laughs> poor Tom Fridley. He had to start in his <laughs> piece of shit. And I think this, he, he probably thought this was going to be his big break off the role because he actually played a serious role for yeah, once. Yeah, he's playing, he's playing one of the detectives on the Las Vegas Vice team. They are responsible for basically busting up uh, uh, drugs and prostitution on that. And it turns out that Sam Jones is is an edge of his seat sort of a homicide detective who gets assigned to work with the Las Vegas Vice. You know each other? Well, I don't know what game you're playing, but you you better be able to work with one another. Oh, I don't want to work with these guys. They're a bunch of pups. Hey, Joe, we didn't ask for you. <laughs> and he doesn't really think that they're real cops because they don't like do real police work because they're not solving real crimes. They're just, I don't know, rousting prostitutes and, and busting Johns. And, and it's... It's a weird movie. And I'm just going to say this. You forgot. This film is directed by Joey Travolta. This film is proof that talent does not run in families. Because, yes, it is John Travolta's brother. <laughs> oh, really? It yes. actually is? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. And apparently... He directed several films, none of them of note. He directed a lot of TV, um, most of it not of note. I think the most uh, recognizable thing that he did was when they did the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show. He directed some episodes of that. Now, Oof. if you've seen the films, that's great. But if you've seen the TV show, you know why you don't remember the TV show, but you remember the film. Next, Honey. Cocoa pheromone concentrate. One taste could send your hormones right into orbit. Wayne's got a recipe for romance. Gladys, don't eat that. No. I'm supposed to make a show that f***ing <laughs> premise. Uh, you shrink a new, a different kid each week. I, 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 I just want to go so f***ing along. I mean, you can only do so much with that f***ing thing. I mean, that's the reason why they had, like, what... There was three sequel? movies. Is that three Actually, movies? there was three movies. Oh no, because they, they had to go the other way. They blew up the last yeah, one. Yeah, well, they had they had Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Honey, I, I Shrunk, shrunk the Us, kids. and then Honey, I Blew Up the, the Kids, kids. Right. and then uh, I don't know. It, uh, apparently, they just run out of creative juice with things to do. Well, with, again, there's only so much you can do with that <laughs> shit. Right, exactly. You know, until, until you start doing fucking, you know, body parts individually. Um, <laughs> So I mean, <laughs> hey, but hey, so check so, this out. <laughs> so here's here's the biggest sin of this fucking film. If you watch it on Tubi, you get none of the nudity that you would have got on Skinamax back in the day. Yeah, because yeah. I'm I'm uh, I, I posted, hey, I'm watching this movie, and then my buddy John's like, oh, enjoy all the good softcore porn. And I'm like, cool. I, I never saw any softcore fucking porn. <laughs> yeah, it was two I was two two X. We got the TV edit. <laughs> Like like VHS too, cause like the the, the, the yeah. quality on Tubi is like dog shit. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. it's really bad yeah, yeah, quality yeah. on Tubi. So, somebody took the VHS VHS cassette that was somewhere lost in CBS <laughs> Studios fucking <laughs> bargain bin, took it out and put it on fucking Tubi, cause that's what we got. Yeah. We got the TV edit. Um, you're not wrong. It is most definitely like one of the lowest quality videos I've ever actually watched all the way through on any streaming platform ever. Um, and that's saying a lot because Amazon has some really questionable shit back in the day. But I will say this. 
it's a starts off the first third of this film. It is a, a bad mystery setup. This is what we're up against. The serial killer. We have no motive. Only method. We have no suspects. Only a few suspicions. And they are, Chief? The yes. second part of this film is a bad detective procedural. Like, like I love, like, he sits down to, he's going to make a database. Any cross-references, Bugs? Okay, let's check it out here. There we go. There you go. How do they match up? All right, let's see here. There we go. Yeah, print that right there, right there. And, and he like literally has like just first names. There's no data that's crossed in there. And, and they're like trying to hunt down which John is seen, which prostitute. There's only three prostitutes. I'm thinking, you needed a database for this. You don't even need a spreadsheet for this. You need like some loose leaf paper and a pen. <laughs> <There's, That's... laughs> their spreadsheet was construction paper shit typed on it. <laughs> that they took a picture of it. wasn't like an actual computer generated image. Uh, Did you notice that? And it was really, really bad. <laughs> Um, and and I, I was laughing so hard at it because he's going to put all of this in, in, in a database. And, like, they come back the next morning. It took him that long to put in, what, 12 records? I, like, like if he was typing with his tongue, he, he could have done it faster than that. But then we get to the third act, the big reveal. And I've got to be honest, as bad as the first and second act of this film is, and it's, it was, there were parts that were legitimately hard to pay attention to. That's how boring and dumb this was. Mm -hmm. The third act is spectacularly, awesomely, amazingly bad. And I was laughing so hard. I found it pretty uncontrollable. It, when they go to where the escort service is set up, which is obviously in a strip mall, because you don't want to draw attention to yourself, and they're sitting outside in the van, and like the Johns are going in. About this. What town 12? Go ahead. First one is uh, Parker. Showtime. Now y'all don't shoot till you see the whites of their thighs now. <laughs> How's it going? And it's not like one going in. It's like one guy goes in and then like a couple seconds go in and another, another guy goes in. in. Yeah. I'm like, these are either some really fast service prostitutes or there's like a plethora of them. Nope, just the three. <laughs> so, so they're talented, multi-talented to say the least. But it, it kicks off there and then you have... The, the one detective, the, the, the database detective, who's, who's, or was it Tom Fridley that was following the, the uh, uh, Eagle Talon in the gray police van for the high speed No, no, chase? no, 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 no that, that, that's the database guy. <laughs> Wyoming. Oh my yeah. god, <laughs> those fing <laughs> chasing This movie has the worst fing chase scenes ever put the fing film. I think the actual actors were driving those vehicles because there's no way those were stunt people yeah. driving those fing things. Not only were there's no way there were stunt people driving it, but you could obviously tell that they did not break the speed limit once. <laughs> they were safety first. It was, it was, that was, that was when I started laughing at this film. That's when I started to get into it. That, that police chase was hilarious. And then the best part of it was, was that, that they had, and the, the chase with the accident, and then there's a cop car that like goes flying over it and burns in the place. For no reason. <laughs> and and the best part of it is is that the cop that was driving the van, the van just kind of screeched to a halt. But for some reason, he had to stay overnight in the hospital because apparently he was breaking so hard in the Econo Line van that I don't know he might have hurt his neck or something. But the bad guy got away. <laughs> so uh, um. Uh, and the bad guy is played by by the the uh, bounty hunter the, the one that hires Lorenzo Lamas yeah. in in Renegade. Renegade, yeah. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
That's it. <laughs> he is a spectacularly amazing villain in this. I when, guess. <laughs> when, he, when he gets out, when they're chasing him in the hotel, and, and he, 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 he beats the crap out of the two FBI guys, <laughs> and then he gets to the bottom and he pulls the shotgun on the guy driving the car. <laughs> point for all of this film's failings and there's a lot the ending of this film is spectacular now i'm just going to say this mike is absolutely right it's a shannon tweed vehicle and that means that shannon tweed and her two co-stars should be front and center in this film the fact that somebody edited it down whoever did that i just want you to know that when you pass you're burning in hell because i was you, about to say that you yeah. you, you did it wrong you yes. you you did wrong the, the people that rented this film Look, they're not all like, Sam Jones was so great in Flash Gordon. I've got to see this. They were like, Shannon Tweed's milfy. Yeah, get, 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 grab that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, there's the other playmate in there too, Rebecca, whatever her last name Oh, is. the one that actually played the, the, the huntress, if you will. Yeah, Christina. <laughs> yeah, Christine. Yeah. Um, Christine, and, yeah. And, and, I, I'm all the way to say, this is spoiler. <laughs> when there is a scene where, where Sam Jones... He decides he's going to show up. He's going to be the guy. He's going to, he's going to, he, they, they think that, that the prostitute is, is basically taking Johns back to her hotel room and she's sleeping with them and then she's killing them and, and she's sticking a hundred dollar bill on their forehead and then shooting a hole through it <laughs> with, with the little cigarette lighter gun that she's packing in her purse because we all know the amazing amount of, of heat that she's packing. <laughs> but so Sam Jones is up there. He's got his, his radio belt buckle and camera phone and all this shit going on. And when she comes out, she's, she's in her broad panties looking fine, mm -hmm. by the way. But then Lou Brown from the Cleveland Indians <laughs> busts out of the closet. Busy! I'm dying at this point. And everything that leads to him dying at the end. With the baseball. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I forgot. I, I, I was laughing. So because here's something. I've got to ask you a question. Because, okay, they have the whole scene. Shannon Tweed gets taken by Lou Brown. And, and he's got a gun to her head. And there's a helicopter up in the air. And Sam Jones throws his gun on the ground because he's not going to let his lady love, his new partner in both professionally and, and you know, uh -huh. romantically, he's not going to let anything bad happen to her. But then the helicopter just fucking explodes for no reason. No, it's, what's his face? Uh, what's his name? Something Brown? Lou Brown? Lou Brown, <laughs> Lou Brown shoots at the helicopter. It only takes one bullet for it to blow up. Well, no, he shoots at it. <laughs> yeah, spontaneously blows up. Um, and then Shantui, like, I guess... Hits him with the elbow or just something yes, like that. Yes. And then the the majestic Flash the, Gordon. The, yeah. <laughs> and his and his fucking fastball pitch right down the fucking middle. <laughs> and and Lou the, Brown goes flying up. And the best part is we get a we get a shot of the dummy dropping the entire leg of the building and he's landing in the back of a truck. A Mazda pickup. <laughs> Mazda back of a shitty Mazda pickup. <laughs> when that body hit the pickup truck bed. I was laughing so hard. I was crying. So, so I'm also going to say this. Here's, here's all right. We, we got to credit where credit's due. Yes. Tom Fridley fucking solves this fucking case. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because you know, this, this, this is a double dose of Tom Fridley, so I give his due. <laughs> He's the one that actually does the detective work. He pieces it together. He figures out that what's his face is is the killer. And and I missed it. What the fuck happened to him? How did he end up in the fucking hospital? You see what? Oh God, he's still breathing. <laughs> Okay, there was a scene where uh, they found a photo of the prostitute. What do you have on the girls? Uh, Sherry and Roslyn were still current employees of the agency at that time of the bust. So basically, apparently, if you're a prostitute in Las Vegas, you get headshots done. And they found it when they, they rousted the escort service. <laughs> and uh, 
they, they found the pictures and they had located two of the prostitutes because there's only three of them. <laughs> and they had the photo of the one they were trying to locate. Apparently the third one here, Christine, she blew down a long time ago. I'll hang on to this one. Give it to the FBI. Quick turnaround on a nationwide. And uh, Sam Jones takes the photo to Lou Brown, and he's like, oh, I'm going to send this to the FBI. Well, he doesn't. He just throws it in the trash can because he's trying to wave off suspicion. But what happens is uh, uh, Tom Fridley sees a photo of the girl, and there's an arm around her, and it's got a very specific pinky ring on it, mm -hmm. and he knows that that motherfucker Lou Brown has the exact same pinky ring. So he's got suspicions. So he decides to find out if Lou Brown had called the FBI and he hadn't. So yes, Tom Fridley, kudos to you. You solved it. Just run away, please. You did the best you could with yeah. the screenplay you were handed. I oh, he was handed some fucking dog shit. <laughs> that fucking dialogue is awful. <laughs> it really is. It is so bad. There, there are so many awful scenes in this film. I, I'm just going to guarantee you that they had to be ad-libbed. The scene where Sam Jones is at the bar with his homicide cop buddy. Jake, take it easy. You know, I don't want to bust my balls over here. <laughs> Speaking of busting balls. <laughs> you remember my work here? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what is it? Something I don't know about? Oh God, it seems all so the dialogue painful. is terrible in that. It, it, it's so hammy and cheesy and dumb. And then he goes to the bar where the the vice cops are. This is before he figures out that they're actually good cops. Uh, he goes there, and like every line of dialogue is just like so smarmy and smug and stupid. And and then. Then he finds out that they, they cracked this big case, and he's like, they, they did that? That was them? And then he like shows up with, with gifts for everybody at the mm -hmm. office, and he's trying to make amends because now he actually respects them as police officers. And all that shit is terrible. Like I said, the first act is terrible, the second act is terrible, the third act is a yeah. masterpiece. So, yep. so uh, Joey Travolta, you, you suck at the kickoff. <laughs> you, you suck at halftime. But, man, you, you know how to close out a movie strong. <laughs> um, we didn't get to see the movie, so I, know, I have no idea how well you shot that or, or, or anything. But <laughs> I blame Tubi. Yeah. But uh, that, that's my big takeaway. If you're going to watch a uh, Skinamax film, don't watch it on Tubi. I, I, uh, I'm going to go one step further. Okay. I'm going to say... Tubi and Freebie and fuck, fuck all these free services and I'll tell you why because when you sit down to watch a movie every time they throw a commercial and number one the commercial breaks are forever like like they're like you know two three minutes long and what's worse than that they completely screw the flow of the movie up because they never actually manage to get the commercial in between the scene cuts it's like then they they, they either cut a scene off too early or then they've got to rewind it and you've got to watch the very last part of a scene before you get you know and then it rolls into the next one and it really screws up the flow of it but i will say this vinegar syndrome if you put this movie a restored version of it out on blu-ray i'll buy it <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, i'm not ashamed to say that so obvious recommend for tony <laughs> he's gonna buy the damn thing um <laughs> because free release uh uh, me don't don't fucking bother. <laughs> Do not fucking bother uh, unless it's on like uh, an actual legit streaming service for free with with the boobage. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and and even then, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> like I said, the uh, first the first two thirds of it are schlog, but man, that last third pays off in spades. I I kind of adored it. So <laughs> that's all I've got. So until our next episode of a scholarly analysis of the films of Tom Fridley, we will catch you next time. <laughs>